something work. What are the things they should keep in mind now when they start thinking about group wear and, and work group computing? One, the benefits are real. This is something that you really should check out. Um, it's a long educational process, but time put into this is probably going to pay off much better than time into picking your next PC or your next desktop application like a spreadsheet. The, the payoffs here are higher. Mm -hmm. Second, this is a big investment, a big investment of money and time for you, for your company, for your coworkers. so you need to think about it carefully. Once these systems are in place and people start to use them, they become, in a sense, mission critical. They have to be up, they have to be supported correctly, and people need to really think about that. There also are a huge number of applications coming out from all sorts of different vendors that sort of play in this market, and you'll have to pick out um, who's going to survive and who's offering functionality that you really need. Yeah, and part of what you have to do is, like with anything else, you've got to decide first what it is you want Want your work group to be able to do. Yes. You know, some applications are, are, are going more toward the salespeople. Some people applications are more on the database side. Some people have more on the email side. So you got to figure out what it is you want to do, what you want to share, and then also you have to decide what kind of network you want. And there's, there's, I guess, there's applications for just every network out there right now, and every email out there, etc. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right, Eric. Thanks so much for all the information. As we just heard, work group computing makes a lot of sense, but it can also be complex. We'll look at some solutions that are designed to make it easy right after these messages. We'll see you shortly. Log on to CompuServe. Join our Computers on Television forum. Go PC TV to find out the latest show information, talk to our producers, or download product demos. Learning to use Windows unleashes the power and convenience of your computer. But learning from manuals is difficult and frustrating. That's because Windows is interactive and dynamic. You need instruction that's just as dynamic. You need the Video Software School. This three-volume course takes you step-by-step step through the most important parts of Windows. You'll learn quickly and easily. It's like having your own personal tutor, but it costs just $74.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-777-MIND. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and I'm here to show you a great new hand tool from Sears. What you working on, Tim? Well, I'm fixing this wheel, but these pliers make it really difficult. I mean, it takes two hands to adjust them, and even then it doesn't fit quite right, so I end up rounding off this nut. Try RoboGrip instead of those slip joint pliers. RoboGrip pliers automatically self-adjust, so you only need one hand to use them. With RoboGrip's exclusive cam mechanism, just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, and the jaws automatically adjust for a perfect fit. RoboGrip makes any job easier. It's perfect for snugging or loosening bolts, and the offset head gives you a better grip, more power, and gets you into tighter places than ordinary pliers. So it's ideal for auto repair work. RoboGrip even works on pipes. The laminated construction makes them strong, just like plywood is stronger than a single piece of wood. Because it's a Craftsman hand tool from Sears, it's fully warranted forever. So, Jan, tell me about the tools you use around the house. Well, I keep the most essential tools, like a hammer, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Jan, if you only have three tools, one of them should be a robo-grip. This handy do-it-all tool is the world's smartest pliers. It grips tightly with just a squeeze of your hand. You only need one hand to use it because it adjusts by itself. It's lightweight, and the handle fits the shape of your hand, large or small. And you know you can trust the quality because it's a craftsman tool, America's number one name in tools. And remember, when you buy from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed, or your money back. For rush delivery of your Craftsman RoboGrip, get your Sears charge or other credit card ready and call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700. Or send check or money order for $19.99 plus shipping and handling and applicable state and local sales tax to RoboGrip, 5959 Triumph Street, Commerce, California, 90040. Call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700 right now. Now that we've gotten an overview of workgroup computing, let's look at some applications. We'll start with PowerSuite from Artisoft, the same folks who brought us Lantastic and Simply Lantastic, low-cost, easy-to-use local area networks. Richard Flynn is here to give us the pitch. Now, as I just mentioned, you mm -hmm. guys are the ones who came up with Lantastic and right. Simply Lantastic. And I guess now what you've done is you've kind of come up with a one-step solution to those folks who say, okay, I think work group computing is for us. Let's do something about it. Right. What we found out with it is that small business is really looking for some tools that help them collaborate, really work together, and communicate with one another. And, and we believe that PowerSuite really gives all the tools that people need to okay, do Okay. So what's in PowerSuite now? Well, it includes our award-winning Lantastic Network software. Mm -hmm. It also includes Lotus's CC Mail and Organizer so that you can organize and have electronic mail. 
It also includes some products from Cheyenne to help share modems and fax boards that are in a fax server. And then we also include Netcom's NetCruiser to allow people to have internet access. Okay, so you guys have thought of everything pretty yeah. much. Well, let's see how they work together because my first thought is going to be, okay, those applications have been around for a right. while, but making them all work together has been pretty kludgy. So obviously you must have done something about that. So show us what you've done. Right. Now one of the things I'm not going to show you is the installation, but we have integrated the installation. So even that becomes easy. You just load in the one set of diskettes and it loads everything for you. Okay, so we're not loading everything separately. Right, so that's all done. Okay. What Lantastic really lets you do is to share files and other resources on a network. So for instance, we'll just go into File Manager real quickly, and we've already set this up. On a server or on another PC, mm -hmm. you can can have your network drive and then your local drive. So if you want to, you can just go onto the drive and you can click into the files and get files back and forth from other areas. Mm -hmm. Now okay. what we really see as being the heart of this is the integration of the communications elements. That's really what people network for, is to right. share and to talk to one another. So for instance, let's say that you're in um, Lotus Organizer and you're just checking your meeting schedule for the day to see how things are going. It'll take just a second as this pops up. Okay. While we're and waiting for it to pop up, I should right. tell you that the statistics tell us mm -hmm. that the number one application that all the work group people want is email. Right. Yeah, so they can talk to each other. Yeah, and so you're in your Lotus Organizer and you're looking and you see that you've got your meeting here. Now, Organizer is integrated with Lotus CC Mail, so you can just click on the icon and that pulls up your CC Mail. And I see that I have some messages, so I look to see what Joel has sent me, and he's asking me for the Davis file on the Tuesday meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, what I can do is just reply back and reply to sender. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to send Bill Peterson a copy of the file, but I know that Bill's out of the office. He's at his fax machine in his uh, remote office, so mm -hmm. I can go to address. I go to BitGate, which is the integration with the Cheyenne Bit software, and then I find Bill Peterson, and click OK. Then I go and I'm finished addressing, so I attach the file, which is located on a server somewhere. It's located on the server in the main office. So I just go to the network drive, and I find the Davis file, and I attach that. Now, none of that's local to my machine. And then I go and say, here's the file, and I send that. And now that's going through CC mail to um, excuse me, to, to Joel, and it's going through the fax machine to Bill. So that we got the remote capability as well. Here. Absolutely. So, so that's it's pretty easy. That is pretty, good, pretty right. integrated also. Right, and that takes care of everything. Hmm. All right. So we have the capability to, like we would want to do. We can share files. We can right. send faxes. We can uh, have email. We have group scheduling, right? right, which is very important. Absolutely. And then in addition to that, we do have access to the Internet. Yes. Okay. Now, what if somebody already has a network? Let's say they already have Lantastic or they have another mm -hmm. network, but they like the way that you have brought together the software applications right. that they would want, and they want that integration, they want that application. Will this work on other networks? Absolutely. What we um, really are very proud of the fact is that Lantastic is designed to work with lots of other operating systems. So we have a Lantastic version for OS2. We also work with the Windows and the DOS elements. So right now, all of the major operating systems we work with. We also work as a client for both um, NetWare as well as with um, LAN Server and LAN Manager, all of those. So you can really integrate this regardless of what your network is. Right. But the real core key here is the fact that it all is integrated and that for small businesses and small and growing businesses, you know, the, fl the features and the flexibility of the package is really there all in one product solution, right. um, allowing you to have one purchase. Yeah, as I said, what I was worried about it was going to be mm -hmm. kludgy, but obviously it's, it's, you've, you guys have done a lot of work to make them all work together mm -hmm. very well. All right, yeah. Richard, thanks for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. Faxing is a key form of communication these days, but handling all those faxes can get very unwieldy on the network. Let's go over to Giles for a possible solution to that problem. Receiving and routing faxes is sort of the Achilles heel of workgroup computing. Well, Nestor has come up with one solution to the problem, and Sandy Leavenworth is here to show it to us. It's called Enroute. Sandy, why is receiving and uh, routing faxes the Achilles heel of workgroup computing? Uh, basically because computers don't know what a fax is as it's mm -hmm. basically a picture in the computer right um, so it doesn't know what the information contained in that fax so, so unlike email where you've got the actual address of where it's supposed to go a fax when it comes in 
just sits there until a human goes in and tells right. it somebody where has it goes to actually to. look at it, view it, and then route it to the intended person. Right? Okay. Now we've uh, we've set up a small uh, little situation here where we've got a fax machine. You've just uh, moments ago faxed a document from that fax machine to your right. to your laptop. What happens when we when in route receives a fax? Well, what happens is the fax comes in through uh, basically a fax server product, mm -hmm. and the fax server brings the image in and drops it into a directory or or creates a mail message and sends it to en route. Okay. Okay. En route then looks at the cover page of the fax and tries to determine who the recipient for that fax is. And we use our, our technology to actually read the information right off of the cover page as opposed to actually having to have information contained in the fax message when it was sent. So part of what route does is, is some optical character recognition. It actually recognizes the writing, figures out the right. name of who the, the thing's going to. Yeah, it's actually it's even one step beyond that. Okay. Optical character recognition is typically attributed to machine printed information. NROUT right. goes one step farther and actually can read handprint. Okay, so, so it's a much more as long robust. as the people write the name as, as legibly as possible, then, then they stand a fairly good chance of having it wind, wind up with the right person. Exactly. I mean, it, most routing solutions today require the recipient or the sender of the fax to mm -hmm. actually uh, input a special phone number or a special code. Right. Uh, en route, the only instruction they need is to print my name on the cover page. Okay, so now that uh, the fax has been received and processed, what do we see here? You'll see here that this, while we were standing here, it was processing the fax that we sent, and mm -hmm. it has now routed that fax to someone named Hannah Dykman. And we are using this in conjunction with Lotus Notes mm -hmm. uh, as the mail delivery agent. And you'll see here, we're in the Lotus Notes workspace. We have the mail databases for uh, all of the people available mm -hmm. in this Notes environment. And you'll see here that there is someone named Hannah Dykman. And if we open up her mail database, you'll see that there is indeed a new message there. Mm -hmm. uh, if we open that mail message up, you'll see that it says right here that it's a uh, en route message uh, in the subject field. And it was routed from the en route administrator and is an associated file. If we uh, double click on the file and tell it to launch uh, the image viewer application, notes will go out and launch the image viewer. So that associated file is actually the, uh, an image of the fax received. I mean, here's the page, and there it is right up on the screen. Exactly. And as we, we saw, yeah, it took the name and it routed it right to the right box. So exactly. I think another important thing is not only does it route the fax to the right person, but it also routes it to their email box. Exactly. So it's, it's a, an environment they're used to. Yeah, the unification of the corporate inbox, yeah. Okay, now, uh, you're using it with Lotus Notes right now, but what if I use CC Mail? Uh, CC Mail, uh, Microsoft another, Mail, okay. Notes. Uh, th those three environments are supported directly right now okay. with NROUT out of the box, and we'll have support for other email I systems have more in on the, the way. future. Yeah. Now, say I, I look at this and I go, okay, I definitely can use this, but I've already got a, a fax server set up or, uh, or you know, a server of sorts that my fax modes have attached to. Do I have to set up an entirely new machine or can this work on that machine? What yeah, would, will it depend on the volume of faxing that your organization is doing. You what know, would be an example? If you're receiving somewhere like between 50 and 100 faxes a mm -hmm. day, then you could probably have NROUT operating on the same PC. But um, if it was more than that, we would probably want the power of, of yeah. another machine. Yeah, you'd probably want a separate PC doing it. Okay, well this is NROUT. We're looking at it today under Lotus Notes, but it also works under other uh, mail environments as well. It's mm -hmm. from Nestor. Thank you very much, Sandy, for showing it to us. Sure, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. We're going to take a break, and then Victoria will be back to show us a real gold mine for workgroup users. Stay with us. Want to take a test drive on the Information Superhighway? Receive a free CompuServe starter kit from PCTV and get online to an exciting new world of information. From business to sports, medicine, games, thousands of topics. Call us while supplies last. 1-800-524-3388. Are you paying more for your laser toner cartridges than you paid for your laser printer? Toner cartridges must be replaced frequently and the costs quickly add up. Introducing the Infinity SX High Page Yield Laser Cartridge, a revolutionary new laser cartridge that delivers four to five times the printouts of other cartridges. With Florida TSI's new laser technology, you can save 50% or more on your laser printing costs. Stop wasting time and money changing cartridge after cartridge. One Infinity SX cartridge will provide you with 12 to 15,000 high quality printouts, four to five times the page yield of a standard laser cartridge. The Infinity cartridge is compatible with HP 2 and 3 laser jets as well as 275 other popular printers. Order the Infinity SX laser cartridge today, only $129.95, and start saving 50% or more on your laser toner costs. Your empty Infinity cartridges can be remanufactured again and again for only $65 each. Call now 1-800-477-1282. That's 1-800-477-1282. Now you can create your own personalized cards, posters, and banners on your home or business PC. Free with new Greetings for Windows. 
use greetings to make birthday cards, organize a bake sale, congratulate a friend, or announce a picnic. With greetings, you'll send messages that could only have come from you. And best of all, it's free. All you need are an IBM or compatible PC with Microsoft Windows 3.1 or later, and your imagination. Just choose a card, poster, or banner, select images from the library of over 60 exciting graphics, then add your own personal message and print. It's easy enough for the whole family to use. This exciting free offer is our way of introducing you to the Parsons Technology family of over 50 affordable, high-performance software titles. Call now and get Greetings for Windows free. Just use your credit card to pay the $8.95 shipping and handling charges. Call 1-800-914-6500. Operators are standing by, so act now. If your business is heavily dependent on sales and contact managers, you need groupware designed with those needs in mind. Elan Software says Goldmine is just what you need. You can decide for yourself as we look at it with Natalie Burdick of Elan Software. Now, Natalie, you guys admittedly say that you're very heavy into contact management and sales automation, that kind of thing. But you have a lot more than that for the work group. So why don't we just jump in and show folks what you do have. Absolutely. The key factor that differentiates us from the other programs is the fact that we are looking to automate an entire organization and not just an individual. So, for instance, if Mike McGrail is my account and I need to follow up with him but I'm unavailable to do so since I'm traveling or I have meetings, I can actually schedule what's called a call or any other activity that's part of my workload mm -hmm. and designate another user on the system. So okay, now, before you go any further, I do want to point out to folks right now that you're doing this all right now with, your, with the arrow keys. But it, is, it does support mouse, it's just we had a technical problem with the mouse today, so I don't want them to think they can't use the mouse with the product. Okay, so let's go on. So under the window that indicates primary user, I can actually pick Stefan, who works in my sales group with me, and I can indicate, please follow up with this person on a demo. And that's actually going to be scheduled to Stefan's calendar, not mine. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go across the network, and when, it, when the bell goes off and says, uh-oh, contact Mike McGrail, it's going to, Stefan's going to get it instead of you. Absolutely. Okay. Now, since, again, we're trying to address the needs of multiple users, or more than one individual, a lot of times what you might need to do is schedule a meeting with that particular account. So myself and Stefan would have to attend, and to do that, you usually have to rely on an external application like a scheduling program mm -hmm. but you can actually do that within Goldmine because it is truly a work group application so we got a group scheduler as well okay mm -hmm. and it automatically conflict checks for you another thing that we focus on is the sales automation portion and one of the things you can do is create what's called an automated processes actually and that's a series of events that you can define that happen on a regular basis so mm -hmm. you can minimize the amount of manual routine things you do okay so in other words if, if after you talk to a client if you routinely send them a fax to, to confirm the conversation and then you send them some printed mm -hmm. materials and you have somebody done in, in ordering do something right. else you can automate all that so it just happens automatically exactly that's excellent another, like that another feature we have is remote synchronization because we also recognize that in most organizations not everyone's going to be in the office all the time so if you travel on the road with a notebook it would make sense for that person out in the field to be connected with the home office and vice versa and we can do that through the synchronization process okay so we don't have to have a separate application that we have to plug in and etc to do remote synchronization all that's built in as absolutely well. okay absolutely. all right so now let's let's uh, talk about what kinds of things or environments this is going to work with uh, you have this has its own database obviously because mm -hmm. it's a contact manager but what if the corporation has a different database I mean we've got DBase or Paradox or right. something else out there access or whatever is it going to work with that as well absolutely you can import and export in batch mode or you can actually set up what are called DDE links and mm -hmm. Goldmine runs on any network okay so that's the next question I was going to ask mm -hmm. network is not a problem and now what about email we know how important email is that's a very important application for groups we have our own internally driven email but we also link to Microsoft mail and we're going to have links for CC mail shortly Okay, all right, so even though this is a designed specifically for people who are really heavily into sales, obviously it's a group of sales people, this is going to work very well for them, and it's going to work with whatever existing applications you have as well. Absolutely. Okay, all right, Natalie, thanks so much for being with us. Analysts tell us that 50 million business people will be using groupware by the end of the decade. For it to have that kind of saturation so quickly, it must make a pretty significant difference in productivity and the bottom line. So, if you haven't done so already, you'd better check it out soon. For PCTV, I'm Victoria Smith, wishing you healthy and happy computing.
visit our Computers on Television forum on CompuServe. Go PCTV to give us your ideas, download product demos, or to find out the latest program information. Why did the Boston Computer Society name PC and Mac Connection the best all-around customer service company? It's the professionalism of the sales, the sales force. That first person you speak with is always friendly and always very knowledgeable. And that means a lot. We've been providing the best service in the business since 1982. I've been a very satisfied PC and Mac Connection customer for years. Call for our latest catalog. Parece diferente esta noche. Que no termina de tipear el informe mensual de marketing. Es un plomo y me están presionando. No te lo puedo creer. Todavía no has oído hablar del nuevo software de reconocimiento de voz de IBM. Hello and welcome to the PCTV Users Group. I'm Giles Bateman. The past couple of years have seen tremendous advances in computing power. Hard drives in the gigabyte range are available. 8 to 16 megs of RAM is not uncommon. And processors like the PowerPC and Pentium have brought workstation level performance to the personal computer. All these advances should theoretically enhance our computing experience by making it easier to do more with and get more out of our computers. But it hasn't quite worked that way. The problem is the software we use. People use computers to simplify complex tasks, but as our needs have grown more complex, software has also become more complex, and programs have become real resource hogs. In other words, they take up a lot of hard drive space, they use as much RAM as they can get away with, and they require the latest processors just to keep from being unbearably slow. So what's the solution? How do you simplify increasingly complex tasks while at the same time use less resources? The answer is to share. So much of our computing power is wasted on duplication of effort. For instance, think of all the applications you have on your hard drive. Each one uh, may take up as much as 20, 30, or more megs just for the program and its related files. And all of those applications are duplicating a great deal of effort, such as file management, memory management, and the ability to open and, and close information and documents from other applications. Well, what if each of those applications, those monolithic applications, was shrunk down to a component so that the word processing component did word processing, the image editing focused on image editing, and video editing, the like. You get the idea. Well, what I'm describing is a component architecture. If you find this idea interesting, then stay tuned. On today's users group, we're going to check out object linking and embedding, also known as Olay, a component architecture from Microsoft. We'll see Olay in action, and we'll also catch a glimpse of its competition, OpenDoc. Stay with us. I was afraid of the computer, but with Quicken, the world's number one finance software, it's easy. And to find out just how easy, call this number to try Quicken for just $9.95. Stop worrying about money. Quicken shows exactly where your money goes and exactly how much you have. Get all your financial information accurately organized in one place. Let Quicken pay your bills, track bank accounts, investments, taxes, budgets, and more. And it's simple because Quicken looks and works just like your checkbook, only easier. Pay a bill once, then next time Quicken remembers and does it all. See how Quicken's graphs instantly show you what you spent in any given month or on any given item. Get reports like these at the touch of a key. And let Quicken reconcile your whole bank statement in less than two minutes. So, if you have a PC with Windows, DOS, or a Mac, call now to try Quicken for only $9.95. That's right, only $9.95 to try Quicken. Call 1-800-624-2815. Now you can create your own personalized cards, posters, and banners on your home or business PC. Free with new Greetings for Windows. Use Greetings to make birthday cards, organize a bake sale, congratulate a friend, or announce a picnic. With Greetings, you'll send messages that could only have come from you. And best of all, it's free. All you need are an IBM or compatible PC with Microsoft Windows 3.1 or later, and your imagination. Just choose a card, poster, or banner, select images from the library of over 60 exciting graphics, then add your own personal message and print. It's easy enough for the whole family to use. This exciting free offer is our way of introducing you to the Parsons Technology family of over 50 affordable, high-performance software titles. Call now and get Greetings for Windows free. Just use your credit card to pay the $8.95 shipping and handling charges. Call 1-800-914-6500. Operators are standing by, so act now. Olé, 
Play, which used to stand for object linking and embedding, is the technology Windows applications use to move information from one program to another. But it's actually more than that. Michael Rissi from Microsoft joins me now to explain. Now, Michael, you're the one that said I had to say it used to stand for object linking and embedding. That's what we're all used to. You say it's different now, so let's clear this up. What are we talking about? Well, Victoria, the reason is that it, OLAY did stand for object linking and embedding when all it was used for was moving information between Windows applications, say spreadsheets and, and word processors. Today, OLAY is used for software integration in a much more global way. It links development tools and applications, it provides component definitions, it can work across platforms. So rather than focusing on just what it does within applications, we just say OLAY, meaning software integration in general. Okay, but it still does the old stuff where you well, move stuff between applications, which is no small feat. No, uh, that's, know, we, that's not diminish that. No, it's absolutely correct. In fact, you'll see a demonstration of a number of those things in Perfect Office in okay. just a few minutes. Okay, so now what types of users or what types of uh, developers can benefit from this? Well, you can divide Olay into you categories by user. So what you'll see the end user things in, in the uh, application demonstration. It can also be used by developers creating solutions with applications or components. Mm -hmm. It can also be used in the enterprise. We're announcing a number of things this week where we're talking about how Olay will work on distributed systems and multiple different types of platforms and so forth. So it, it is cross-platform. It is cross-platform. And it can also be used by different vertical groups defining specific software integration standards for their own business needs. For example, banks need to talk to automated teller machines. Right. That's one of their needs that they can solve with Olay. Okay. All right. So have you got some stuff to show us? I do. I'm focused mostly on the solution developer part. And so what I'll be showing you, first of all, is Olay Automation. Olay Automation is the ability for the development tool or programming language to tell another application or another component what to do. Okay. Now, in the example here, I have Microsoft Excel. And let's suppose every month you write the same report. So what you want to do is automate that process. Mm -hmm. So what I've added is a Write Report button to my spreadsheet. And by clicking on that, I'm going to run some Visual Basic for Application code. And it actually breaks on this particular line. OK, so this was actually written in Visual Basic. Right, in mm -hmm. Visual Basic for Applications inside of Excel. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is show you how that code executes in Visual Basic for Applications against the Word program running in the background. So I can just press F8 and step through my code and you're going to see that I'm starting to insert words in the word processor. Mm -hmm. Over there on the left. Over, correct. Mm -hmm. So now what's happening... This is pretty neat. We're actually seeing code here. This is right. pretty neat. <laughs> so you're running code on one side and it's telling Word what to do on the other. You see I just inserted a whole Excel spreadsheet. Right. Insert para. Right. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to keep scrolling through and I sign off. And we can go see what I've created here. It's actually a Word document. And this was created for me automatically using this Olay automation code in Excel telling Word what to do. Mm, okay. So you can use this either between applications or you can actually tie together smaller components using this Olay automation process. Okay, we got it. We're getting it anyway. Oh, we're getting it. So that's an example of, of linking applications together with Olay. Mm -hmm. Another example would be to link or combine multiple components to create a new application. And for that, I've got a copy of Microsoft Access. Which is a database, we should point out. It's a database product, right? And what we have here is a clock sitting in this form. That clock is actually an Olay control. So Olay defines this reusable component architecture. I'll add another clock so you can see how easy it is to add these. You just insert uh, custom control, and I'll choose the event clock control. And there's my second control. I'll resize that. And we'll run the form so that you can see we've got multiple controls active at the same time. And so there's no conflict. They can, they can be running multiple controls. Multiple controls, right. They can all talk to each other. You can also program these controls you know, mm -hmm. using the same Olay automation type commands you saw just a moment ago in Microsoft Excel. Now, this is obviously a very simple control. It's just a clock interface. Right. I also have something a little more complex, which is the... Uh, when you can find it, you're when going to show it When I can find it, I can okay. show it to you. That we, okay. want to go to, we want to go to number two. Mm -hmm. And this is a slightly richer control. It's created by a company uh, called Linnell Systems in New York. This is a video control that actually will run video clips for us. So you can do whatever type of functionality or put whatever type of functionality you want into one of these OA controls. And here you see, this is actually the welcome screen to Windows 95. You actually see the video running in the Olay control. Mm -hmm. And now we'll, you'll see it kind of unfold and mm -hmm. become a bunch of clouds, which is the Windows 95 logo. Neat. 
So the idea is that you can put any functionality you want into these Olay controls. You can link them together, have multiple ones together uh, on the same form, and build application out of components. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what we're talking about is that, that, that Olay now essentially is a package on CD-ROM or whatever, and it's lots of these little components, and you can mix them and match them however you want to, and they'll work with Visual Basic, and they'll work with different applications, etc. That's right. You can actually get a CD like that from different publications that pre-sell whole sets of controls that you can then link together in your application. Olay itself will actually ship the, the functionality, the architecture, and, and many of the services we've talked about for mm -hmm. the application integration and, and database... Or, uh, excuse me, development tool integration, will actually ship in the Windows 95 operating system and in the Windows NT operating system. So it, it's in the operating system for, for your applications and development tools to use. That's pretty neat. Okay. All right, I think we got this. It's pretty complex, but I think you did a good job, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. When we return, we'll see how Olay can enhance a perfect office. Don't go away. Log on to CompuServe. Join our Computers on Television forum. Go PC TV to find out the latest show information, talk to our producers, or download product demos. When it comes to buying the newest in computer products, you want the facts. Fast. So JCN is giving you the facts 24 hours a day. Just call 1-800-FACTS-JCN for the latest, most up-to-date hardware and software information. A simple phone call will deliver computer product information right to your fax in just seconds. It's all free, it's all fast, and it's all yours when you call 1-800-FACTS-JCN. So hurry. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and I'm here to show you a great new hand tool from Sears. What you working on, Tim? Well, I'm fixing this wheel, but these pliers make it really difficult. I mean, it takes two hands to adjust them, and even then it doesn't fit quite right, so I end up rounding off this nut. Try RoboGrip instead of those slip joint pliers. RoboGrip pliers automatically self-adjust, so you only need one hand to use them. With RoboGrip's exclusive cam mechanism, just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, and the jaws automatically adjust for a perfect fit. RoboGrip makes any job easier. It's perfect for snugging or loosening bolts, and the offset head gives you a better grip, more power, and gets you into tighter places than ordinary pliers. So it's ideal for auto repair work. RoboGrip even works on pipes. The laminated construction makes them strong, just like plywood is stronger than a single piece of wood. Because it's a craftsman hand tool from Sears, it's fully warranted forever. So Jan, tell me about the tools you use around the house. Well, I keep the most essential tools, like a hammer, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Jan, if you only have three tools, one of them should be a RoboGrip. This handy do-it-all tool is the world's smartest pliers. It grips tightly with just a squeeze of your hand. You only need one hand to use it because it adjusts by itself. It's lightweight, and the handle fits the shape of your hand, large or small. And you know you can trust the quality, because it's a craftsman tool, America's number one name in tools. And remember, when you buy from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed, or your money back. For rush delivery of your Craftsman RoboGrip, get your Sears charge or other credit card ready, and call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700 or send check or money order for $19.99 plus shipping and handling and applicable state and local sales tax to RoboGrip, 5959 Triumph Street, Commerce, California, 90040. Call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700 right now. Microsoft certainly isn't the only one to take advantage of Olay technology in their applications. Many other mainstream developers are putting it to use as well. Beth Guile from Novell joins me now to show us how Olay fits into Perfect Office. Uh, Beth, before we get started, let's, let's talk about what are the components of Perfect Office. I mean, it consists of actually a number of other known applications. Mm -hmm, it sure does. There are actually six applications in Perfect Office standard. Mm -hmm. WordPerfect, Quattro, Presentations, right. Envoy, GroupWise, and InfoCentral. Right. And then the professional package adds Paradox and AppWare. So if anybody's familiar with using any one of those applications, then they'll be familiar with it, their operation within Perfect Office. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and within Perfect Office, they take advantage of Olay to exchange information dynamically, isn't right, it? Right, they do. Right. And actually, five of the applications in Perfect Office support OLE2. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see how they do that. Okay. Um, one of the best examples is lots of times you'll have... Uh, some kind of a newsletter or something and you want to dress it up by putting a graphic in. Mm -hmm. So say you have your spreadsheet open which is Quattro here of course. So what I want to do is take this graphic and I just want to go ahead and select it. 
And now I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop it over into my application. So we've got two separate applications open here, WordPerfect and Quattro Pro. Right. And we're just dragging data between them. Yep. In this case, a graph. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the things we might want to do is the OLE gives you the capability of dragging and dropping, but also the plate capability to do in-place editing. Mm -hmm. So once I've got this over here, uh, maybe it's going to look better as some kind of a pie chart or something else rather than a blocky looking three-dimensional graph the way it is here. So let's go ahead and we'll maximize this. And all we have to do is go ahead and double click. That will launch my in-place editing in Quattro. It will bring up along the top of the screen here, mm -hmm. you'll see the uh, menu change. You'll see the icons change for right. the toolbar, and it'll bring up my graphics tools. So rather than having to go back into Quattro Pro, redo the graph, and then bring it over again, we can do it right here from within WordPerfect That's using right. the light. Okay. That's right. So, and one of the things we've done too is we do a lot of uh, right mouse capability in mm -hmm. Perfect Office. So you can go to the pull down, but if you're not sure which one of these is going to work, you can just go into this box, hit the right mouse button, it will give you the appropriate commands for that location, and then just select type. That'll bring up the selection of different kinds of graphs we can use. We can just pick our pie chart, and we're done. And it makes the change right there. There you go. Okay, now when you brought over this piece of information, I mean, you brought over this chart, it, it was reflecting the values in the spreadsheet at that time. What happens if you want this particular piece, uh, this particular pie chart to reflect changes or, or, or your chart to reflect changes as they're made in the uh, spreadsheet? Okay, then what we'd have to do is when you drag and drop, you just embed it. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is actually link it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to delete that, and we're going to go ahead and um, put these side by side again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, select the chart in Quattro, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go and make a copy of that to my clipboard. And then what I'll do is put my cursor over in my document somewhere, wherever I want this to be. Mm -hmm. And this time what I'm going to do is select Paste Special. That'll bring me up a dialog box mm -hmm. where I can go ahead and do a paste link. So now it's going to be dynamically linked. So as the graph is changed or the information is changed in Quattro, it will change in any of the documents that I've put this graph in as an OLE2 server container. So while the end result kind of looks the same as the first thing we did and in, in, in where we dragged the uh, chart over, this one actually is going to maintain a link and reflect data changes. It so, is. Can you see that in action? Yeah. For instance, if I wanted to go ahead, maybe this apparel number went up. And let's make it something so that we can really notice the change. So I've changed it to 40,000. Notice this change is in Quattro and it will change over in WordPerfect. Immediately in WordPerfect. Mm -hmm. well, now, these are just uh, two of, of the applications in Perfect Office, Quattro Pro and WordPerfect. But there are other applications you mentioned as well which take advantage of Olay to move data around. Could you show us some of that? There are, yes. Um, in the presentations package, lots of times, um, what if you're doing a presentation, mm -hmm. and all presentations are not cookie cutters, so what you need to do is you need to be able to take, say, a slide from one, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to go ahead, select that slide, and move it into the other slideshow. So again, with OLE2 in presentations, you mm -hmm. can do that. It will bring over the graphics. It will use the background that you've got in the other slideshow that you're moving it into. So it makes it very easy to custom make your own slideshow. So in this case, okay. Presentations is using Olay within one program to move data back and forth. I mean, these are actually two separate presentation files we've got they over are. here. They I, are. I think a lot of people might go, well, that's, that's easy, just copy and paste, you know. But actually, you know, to, to do this within a presentations program, you've got the concerns about the background, about the all graphics, sorts of stuff. The graphics, the font styles, the mm -hmm. backgrounds, you know, there's all kinds of things that you have to consider when you're doing a slideshow and you want to make it look um, the same throughout. So this does it automatically by pulling it in through OLE, mm -hmm. it will be the same. Well, it looks like a good use of, of OLE to, to actually move uh, data between applications, to use it within uh, a single application. And this is the per this is Perfect Office from Novell. It incorporates a number of familiar programs, powerful applications in their own right, but also made more powerful by their ability to work together. Right. Thank you very much, Beth, for showing Thank you. This. We'll see an alternative to OLE when we get back. Don't go away. Want to take a test drive on the Information Superhighway? Receive a free CompuServe starter kit from PCTV and get online to an exciting new world of information. 
from business to sports, medicine, games, thousands of topics. Call us while supplies last. 1-800-524-3388. You've seen the Academy Awards, and next week on a special edition of PCTV, the 1995 Excellence in Software Awards. Join us as the Software Publishers Association honors the best of the best with the coveted Cody. Do you know what was the best business software? The best early educational software? Or perhaps you prefer simulations or personal creativity software? If you use a computer, you don't want to miss the 1995 Excellence in Software Awards next week on PCTV on JCN. I was afraid of the computer, but with Quicken, the world's number one finance software, it's easy. And to find out just how easy, call this number to try Quicken for just $9.95. Stop worrying about money. Quicken shows exactly where your money goes and exactly how much you have. Get all your financial information accurately organized in one place. Let Quicken pay your bills, track bank accounts, investments, taxes, budgets, and more. And it's simple because Quicken looks and works just like your checkbook, only easier. Pay a bill once, then next time Quicken remembers and does it all. See how Quicken's graphs instantly show you what you spent in any given month or on any given item. Get reports like these at the touch of a key. And let Quicken reconcile your whole bank statement in less than two minutes. So, if you have a PC with Windows, DOS, or a Mac, call now to try Quicken for only $9.95. That's right, only $9.95 to try Quicken. Call 1-800-624-2815. Videotapes of this program are available for $32.50 each. To order, call 1-800-998-0061. So call now for your copy of any of our award-winning programs and stay on top of the rapidly changing world of computers and personal technology. To order, call 1-800-998-0061. Please specify show date, number, or topic when ordering. Olay isn't the only component architecture around. OpenDoc from CI Labs represents a serious alternative to Olay, and here to show it to us is Paul Denham from IBM. Uh, Paul, what is OpenDoc? How does it compare to Olay? Where does it stand in relation to Olay? Well, uh, Olay is, is Microsoft's offering for right. uh, compound documents, and OpenDoc supersets Olay. It's really what Olay wants to be when it grows up. I see. And you'll see there's extended functionality that you'll receive with, with OpenDoc that you're not going to find in, in OLA anytime soon. So it's embedding objects, but then more. Exactly. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see how OpenDoc works. Okay, what I'm first going to launch is a, uh, a, a little text file, mm -hmm. and it looks like any other text file, only this is actually an OpenDoc part. Okay. Okay, it is a container that has some text in it, okay, which is sort of special terminology that OpenDoc uses. Okay, when you say part, what do you mean? Well, uh, a part is, is any sort of mini application mm -hmm. that you can embed inside of an open doc. So component. here we've got sort of a text part. Can we then combine it with other part yeah, types? Absolutely. And, and what's okay. one of the nice things about open doc is I can embed parts within parts within parts. Uh -huh. Okay, so like the old bento box that the Japanese hold their, their food in because the box stack inside of each other. Uh -huh. and that's actually where the file system got its name. We'll go ahead and we'll embed a part. I'll, I'll select, uh, select a clock part. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to do is I'm going to put it up here. This is sort of a micro clock at the moment. I'll, I'll stretch it out so we can see it. It's a, a nice round face, uh, sort of aqua blue clock. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, it's actually somewhere. a live clock too, though. It's it's, it's it's actually running in live, and it'll continue to run mm -hmm. while I continue to do other work on this document. I can edit this document simply by cl clicking on the document, and now I can uh, highlight text. I can uh, change my font. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and we'll crank that up to say 12 points. Okay. So I can edit this in place at the same time my clock is a separate application mm -hmm. running all by itself. I think that would be a, a key point because a lot of people might look at this and say, well, look, I can put a circle into my desktop publishing program and the text will wrap around it and I can still change the text. But what in fact is happening here is we're not using just one program. We're using separate parts and those parts don't even have to understand uh, the other parts that are with That's right. It. The okay. clock knows nothing about the text. Okay. The text knows nothing about the clock. What are some of the other parts we can put in here? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead. Uh, I, I showed you how to, how to pull things down from the pull down menu here right uh, and and that's a pretty standard fare one of the neat things that I can do is I can actually go to a little parts bin here and I've got little templates so we got little for icon representations yeah of our parts. I've okay. got a mind game I've got a card game I could drop those in or let's, let's put in a globe okay this is a pretty complex uh, object mm -hmm. um, 
it's, it's pretty huge, it's going to take a minute to load, and it's going to be spinning around while you see it. And you're going to see there's, there's no rectangular shape to it at all. Right. These parts are sort of overlapping each other, and you can see how complex that uh, object really is. Now, the fact that the, both the clock is moving and the globe is spinning is something that Olay cannot do uh -huh. and won't be able to do anytime soon. I see. So, so this, is, this is really neat stuff because this could be a mission critical application to me where I've got some live data coming in mm -hmm. that I've got to see. For instance, a stockbroker looking at a, a ticker tape. Why don't we see an example of that? Can we do well, that? Well, yeah, we can do that. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring one up. Now you've got a, an example now. What we're going to see now is... Here is, here is a, a ticker tape uh, running down here below. Mm -hmm. and you can see it scrolling across. Now this is connected to uh, you know my machine right now. This could be across a network, right? Okay, Can it be coming from an online service or something like that. I mean, the the like a Dow Jones or a Reuters or something, right? At the same time, I've got another ticker here, which is which is shows me the stocks that I want to look at mm. versus every stock out there, right? And then I have that link to this three-dimensional bar chart that's showing me the prices. You can see it's changing. The numbers will, will fluctuate and change, and the graph will change its shape correspondingly. All three of these are little bitty applications running side by side, mm -hmm. talking to each other, yet they didn't know about each other when they were created. And simultaneously as well. Yes. So, so, but they're actually interacting and sharing data as well, and, and, and basing their, themselves on that incoming data. Exactly. They're, 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 they're changing their, their shape. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're adjusting their values mm -hmm. based on the incoming feed. They're just linked together. Now, uh, we've got another type up here in the corner. What is that? Uh, well, this is a, what you've probably seen before is a, uh, a video clip. Right. And the important thing to note is I'm showing full motion video. Uh -huh. this, this all, by the way, I don't have a video card in here. This is all software compression right. that comes with OS2 Warp. But I'm showing this running. Notice my ticker is running. The ticker is still running. All the pieces are still yeah. adjusting it. Yeah. Now, this is running on a ThinkPad. So, I mean, it's got a 486 processor, and it's not even using the latest uh, big you know, Pentium processor, for instance. And yet it's able to do this. This must be a much more efficient use of resources then. Well, the difference between this and Olay, mm -hmm. if you use WordPerfect Office and mm -hmm. I use Lotus Smart Suite Office, you can't give me an Olay document that I mm -hmm. can read, okay? Because I've got to have everything you use to create that in order to see it, mm -hmm. okay? And also, that's a huge set of applications. That mm -hmm. can be you know, 20, 30, 40 megabytes on my hard drive. Well, a lot of people can't do that. Right. OpenDoc says, no, we're going to give you very generic, small parts. Mm -hmm. So each of these parts, the video player, the graphics viewer, the ticker, the charting, the text, they're small. And they're, and they're, they're across everything. They're across Macintosh, Sun, Next, uh, IBM OS2, AIX, uh, MVS, OS Run. We're, we're offering this across all the platforms. And, and we're going to see uh, a lot of the big applications, the spreadsheets, the uh, paint programs, the image editing programs, uh, evolve down to a part then, yes, the, the, which can be used across those platforms. That's right. The next generation of spreadsheet or work processor will pick the best to breed component they want to snap in there rather than writing it themselves as a monolithic application. And all this is coming soon for uh, OS2, uh, Mac, and, and, and more. The official pre press dates are, are Macintosh will ship this mm -hmm. with the next release of, of Mac OS this fall. Right. It'll ship, the OS2 version will ship this fall as well, mm -hmm. followed by AI, AIX and then the Sun and, and Next and so on. Okay. Well, this is OpenDoc. It's from CI Labs. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. This is an exciting piece of technology. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today. One way or another, component architectures will replace monolithic applications. And from a user's viewpoint, that's great news. For the PCTV Users Group, I'm Giles Bateman. I'm Russ Spencer. Welcome to New Media News, your daily window on the fascinating, ever-changing information world.
And I'm Deborah Brown. Join us as we explore the wide spectrum of news and views on computers, communications, and information technology. On this program, now there's a computer game from one of the most famous of all TV sports broadcasters. It's called John Madden Football, for a good reason. Take a look coming up on New Media News. And you must be careful not to get in a wreck on the new computer game, The Need for Speed. You can rev up your engine and head down the highway just ahead on New Media News. And a new educational game will introduce you to the deadly stinging catfish or hungry piranha of the Amazon. Stay tuned to New Media News to see what the Amazon Trail is all about. But first, there is so much news about technology today. Our Silicon Valley correspondent Jim Goldman is here to tell you about the Tech Museum in San Jose, the changes that will take place in the mobile computer market, and the role of Silicon Graphics. Here's more. Thanks very much. We begin this week with what could be a major cash infusion for a local technology museum in San Jose. A smaller version of the museum already exists, the Tech Museum of Innovation. But now organizers are trying to build a much larger one at a cost of some $20 million. And thanks to a sizable grant from the founders of Hewlett Packard Company, the museum project is now well on its way. This is really a historic moment, not only for the tech, but also for the city of San Jose. It is an, it's really unprecedented in the history of San Jose to have $10 million in private sector dollars committed to a single cultural and educational institution. This is a great tribute to what's been done here in the Silicon Valley. But I want to say that this is going to go much beyond the Silicon Valley because there's a whole new interest in technology going across the country. The tech is now well ahead of schedule and now more than halfway to its goal of $20 million. Also this week, some projections across several technology industries from the San Jose market research firm DataQuest, and generally the news is pretty good. A generally rosy picture, in fact, analysts at the firm DataQuest say the mobile computing market will see some major changes over the course of 1995. The industry today dominated by companies like NEC, Toshiba, Apple, and IBM as far as laptop computers are concerned. And DataQuest says look for some major movement by Korean companies, most notably Samsung. Keep in mind AST, uh, the rumor's running around. It looks like uh, Samsung's going to buy 20% of that company. And I think uh, they, part of that is that they will be offering uh, screens and DRAM and other kinds of parts that are crucial to selling PCs at, you know, prices and availability that enable AST to grow pretty dramatically. The industry is booming, though new competition by Samsung with quality products and good screens could eventually mean lower prices. And along those lines, Silicon Graphics enjoying what promises to be a very strong 1995 as well, at least according to that company's chief executive. The workstation maker enjoying record results during the end of last year, and now company chief executive Ed McCracken says 1995 looks equally strong. Silicon Graphics is kind of on a roll right now. We have a tremendous window. The kind of great graphics that you see in the, in the movies is, is being used in a lot of really practical applications, and our growth rate is accelerating, and I couldn't be happier. I think we have turned a corner. We see that acceleration in our growth rate, along with the economies improving around the world, and you put all that together, and uh, the future looks really, really great. I couldn't... Uh, I wouldn't want to trade our position with any other company in the world. Silicon Graphics, of course, providing computers that are instrumental in Hollywood. They're the tools that are sometimes used to create pretty incredible special effects. Those computers also now being used by Detroit automakers to design a new generation of car. Cypress Semiconductor, another San Jose company that's doing very well indeed. The chip company now expecting another record year after a record report just a couple of weeks ago. The San Jose chip maker, which suffered layoffs in red ink as recently as 1992, is now looking ahead to a billion dollars in sales much sooner than anyone had expected. The company reporting over $400 million in sales in 1994 of also good profits, and the outspoken chief executive at Cyprus, T.J. Rogers, says he's pleased with that company's results. And a management uh, change to tell you about from an up-and-coming Silicon Valley company as well. Mike McConnell, who ran Supermac before it merged with Radius Corporation, has resurfaced now as the president and chief executive of the up-and-coming Visioneer. The company based in Palo Alto is coming up with ways to integrate paper and electronic information. It's thought that McConnell joined the company as president and chief executive to help that company go public hopefully, maybe, sometime as soon as this year. That's the latest in Silicon Valley business news from the technology capital of the world. I'm Jim Goldman reporting. 
Well, call it discrimination, but boys aren't allowed in this exclusive club on Prodigy. The club is called Jane's Brain, and it's actually an online bulletin board for girls ages 12 to 19. Newsweek reports that more than 3,000 girls have joined the club, and it appears that at least some of them think boys aren't so icky after all. Newsweek says that Jane's Brain has invited 10 of its favorite male infiltrators to join the clubhouse chat. Newsweek reports that so far the boys have behaved themselves, they've been very, very good, and the girls seem to like their input. And New Media News will be right back. Get the highlights of the week in computers and emerging technology in just half an hour. Miss an episode of New Media News? No problem. Get the scoop on Saturday at 8 and 10 p.m. Eastern on NEU. This is Barry Farber for IDT, the folks who give you unlimited, uncensored internet for just $15 a month. Thousands of you have been signing up for IDT's unbeatable internet service. IDT puts the whole entire world in your hands. News, entertainment, science, sex, art, libraries, games, people for one low, flat monthly fee of just $15. And that includes complete technical help. You heard right, IDT gives you all the internet all the time, including technical support for only $15 a month. No hourly charges, no censorship, no limits, and it's always, I repeat, always a local call. Now, isn't that a welcome change from all those big, bland online companies who censor what you can see and do and have the nerve to charge by the minute? So grab your pencil and get ready to take down IDT's toll-free number. Let IDT put the whole unlimited world in your hands for just $15 a month. Read, write, research, correspond, download just about everything imaginable 24 hours a day. Call IDT now at 1-800-245-8000. I repeat, that's 1-800-245-8000. Do you want to be more efficient and persuasive at work, more creative at home? Well, you can be. Learning Microsoft Word can turn your computer into a powerhouse. The Video Software School can show you how to use Word quickly, easily, and at your own pace. You'll get these three lessons, more than an hour and a half of demonstrations for a special package price of just $79.95, plus shipping and handling. Call today, 1-800-777-MIND. Welcome back. Did you know that each year Germany hosts the world's largest computer trade show? It's called CBIT, and according to a company called Hanover Fairs USA, the German show is three times the size of Comdex. As you may know, Comdex is the name of a popular trade show for the computer and communications industry in Las Vegas. Germany's CBIT is sl was slated to begin on March 8th in Hanover. The show organizers say that 680,000 visitors from 100 countries were expected to attend that show. Moreover, they say an additional 6,000 companies from around the world set up shop on 3 million square feet of exhibit space. Plus, some 7,000 journalists were expected to attend CBIT. That's more journalists than the number who covered the Olympics. In other words, CBIT is a really big show. One of the most famous of all TV sports broadcasters, John Madden, now has his own computer game. It's from EA Sports, and it's called, quite logically, John Madden Football. Here's a quick sample. Hi everyone, welcome to John Madden Football. Ryan, with left at the 43. Maddox Cheese on the handoff, the ball is loose. A bunch of Tampa Bay defenders are there. Who comes up with it? The big nose tackle. He's got the ball on the far sideline. He's at the 15, the 10. He's in the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown. Have you ever heard of Gayan Wilson? You may have seen his work in The New Yorker. He's the cartoonist known for his macabre style with humorous overtones. Well, now Wilson has developed what is called the Ultimate Haunted House. That's the title of the first game for kids in the Microsoft home line of software programs. Microsoft says the game uses the power of multimedia technology to create an eerie but fun haunted house that will spark any child's imagination. The software giant says the game offers chills, chuckles, and challenges 
that kids are sure to enjoy. Look for the ultimate haunted house at a computer store near you. New Media News has featured the World Wide Web on several programs. But to many folks, the web is a bit overwhelming. After all, it's part of the mysterious Internet. Well, an executive with a company called Colorado Supernet sees things a bit differently. His name is Guy Cook. And recently, Cook told a Colorado newspaper, the Denver Business Journal, that the World Wide Web is doing for the Internet what Apple did for personal computers. In short, he says that the web is making the net user-friendly. That's because the web facilitates the use of graphic software that simplifies the arduous task of searching Internet databases. In other words, Cook says that the World Wide Web will make surfing the Internet a whole lot easier. Next, let's rev up the engines and head down the highway. Careful, though, don't get in a wreck as we watch an excerpt from the computer game The Need for Speed from Electronic Arts. to show you a great new hand tool from Sears. What you working on, Ted? Well, I'm fixing this wheel, but these pliers make it really difficult. I mean, it takes two hands to adjust them, and even then it doesn't fit quite right, so I end up rounding off this nut. Try RoboGrip instead of those slip joint pliers. RoboGrip pliers automatically self-adjust, so you only need one hand to use them. With RoboGrip's exclusive cam mechanism, just a simple squeeze of the spring-loaded handle, and the jaws automatically adjust for a perfect fit. RoboGrip makes any job easier. It's perfect for snugging or loosening bolts, and the offset head gives you a better grip, more power, and gets you into tighter places than ordinary pliers. So it's ideal for auto repair work. RoboGrip even works on pipes. The laminated construction makes them strong, just like plywood is stronger than a single piece of wood. Because it's a craftsman hand tool from Sears, it's fully warranted forever. So Jan, tell me about the tools you use around the house. Well, I keep the most essential tools, like a hammer, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Jan, if you only have three tools, one of them should be a robo-grip. This handy do-it-all tool is the world's smartest pliers. It grips tightly with just a squeeze of your hand. You only need one hand to use it because it adjusts by itself. It's lightweight, and the handle fits the shape of your hand, large or small. And you know you can trust the quality because it's a craftsman tool, America's number one name in tools. And remember, when you buy from Sears, your satisfaction is guaranteed, or your money back. For rush delivery of your Craftsman RoboGrip, get your Sears charge or other credit card ready and call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700. Or send check or money order for $19.99 plus shipping and handling and applicable state and local sales tax to RoboGrip, 5959 Triumph Street, Commerce, California, 90040. Call 1-800-972-3700. That's 1-800-972-3700 right now. I was afraid of the computer, but with Quicken, the world's number one finance software, it's easy. And to find out just how easy, call this number to try Quicken for just $9.95. Stop worrying about money. Quicken shows exactly where your money goes and exactly how much you have. Get all your financial information accurately organized in one place. Let Quicken pay your bills, track bank accounts, investments, taxes, budgets, and more. And it's simple because Quicken looks and works just like your checkbook, only easier. Pay a bill once, then next time Quicken remembers and does it all. See how Quicken's graphs instantly show you what you spent in any given month or on any given item. Get reports like these at the touch of a key. And let Quicken reconcile your whole bank statement in less than two minutes. So, if you have a PC with Windows, DOS, or a Mac, call now to try Quicken for only $9.95. That's right, only $9.95 to try Quicken. 
call 1-800-624-1652. Thanks for joining us here on New Media News. There are way too many books on the shelves these days about the internet, and most of them are junk. So says San Jose Mercury news writer Dan Gilmore. But Gilmore concedes he does have a few favorite titles. One is called The Whole Internet User's Guide and Catalog by Ed Kroll. Another book Gilmore recommends is The Internet Guide for New Users. Then there's this practical title. It's The Internet Yellow Pages. Still another book that the computer editor likes is The Internet for Everyone, and that includes you. Look for these titles at your favorite bookstore or computer store. Talking computers are the item of the day, and today New Media News reporter Mark Lawrence and Microsoft's Darren Stegelmeyer demonstrate voice annotations on MS Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Let's watch. Thanks, Russ. We're talking with Darren Stegelmeyer from Microsoft, and Darren is here today to talk to us about voice annotations in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And Darren, welcome to New Media News. Thank you, Mark. So what, what specifically uh, are we going to talk about in this area? Well, a lot of times you may be looking at a document and you have an idea, mm -hmm. and you want to uh, correct it later, possibly. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough time to, to type it out right now, the ideas that you have on what modifications you want to change, or maybe insertions you'd like to put into the document. And you want to save your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So rather than put in, for example, the text or something to remind you of what you're thinking, you can insert a voice object or a sound object into the document itself using voice annotation to be able to remind you of what changes you'd like to make. Great. Let's take a look at what, how this works. Okay. Well, what we're doing is right now we actually want to annotate that we want to review the numbers that we're looking at in this table. We think mm -hmm. maybe the October numbers are off. Okay. And so what we do to insert an annotation we choose insert from the menu mm -hmm. and then annotation. As we do so, you can see the screen changes a little bit and we can view the annotations at the bottom. Mm -hmm. At this point, we could put in a text annotation if we'd like to and type in some Swedish or uh, maybe this is Dutch. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, Russian maybe. But yeah, Russian maybe. We'll okay. Continue on. But since we don't want text, we want to actually put in a voice annotation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and use the little recorder to be able to do that. It's got a nice little button on the toolbar. You can see you insert a sound object. Mm -hmm. so let's just go ahead and record a quick annotation. We click on the record button, and then we say, please review the numbers for October. I think they're incorrect. We go ahead then and exit and update our document at that point. And now what we have is a sound object as part of the document. All right. If I come back at a later time and I want to view these revisions, or possibly I've given this to one of my coworkers and I want them to review the numbers mm -hmm. here uh, for October, they would simply choose to view the annotation from the view menu, and they would see that I have an annotation here by this table. At that point, they can play the back of the annotation by double clicking and then we say, on the Please annotation. review the numbers for October. I think they're incorrect. It's pretty good recording. Yeah. And so it's pretty simple to be able to either record you a message or some of your coworkers a message mm -hmm. on what you would like them to do uh, on the document to be able to make any corrections or add or change. Uh, some of the numbers, or in this case, change the numbers here. So what would you say is the main benefit of this, of doing it uh, in voice as opposed to text? I think it's a time savings issue. If you've mm -hmm. just got some, a quick idea, you want to get that idea down before you forget about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a faster way to be able to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And mm -hmm. since we have the tools and the functionality, uh, why don't we use the best tool for that, which would be kind of a little voice annotation to put in as opposed to taking the time to write out a message, for example. And this is at no additional cost, I assume. You just have to have the system available that to record the, the sound. That's correct. Uh, you, can, you can do this with Microsoft Word. You can do insert uh, sound objects inside of Excel uh, or PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you can do that by going to the Insert Object menu, but it's built into the applications. The only real system requirement you need is a sound system that's capable of, of recording as well as playback, mm -hmm. uh, which most sound systems are, and they usually come with a microphone that you can use for doing that. Right. So, um, so in terms of efficiency, uh, if you're working in a, in a group and, uh, and you have a lot of corrections to make, it, it speeds your process along. As you're going along, a, a thought comes to mind, you can just record it. Yes. Great. That's fantastic, Darren. It uh, looks like a feature that a lot of people may not be aware of uh, in Microsoft. And uh, so we appreciate you coming by and sharing that with us. Um, and we'll have to have you back for some, some other topics in the future. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mark. We've been talking with, with Darren Stegelmeyer from Microsoft and uh, looking at voice annotations in Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And uh, hopefully you got some good information out of that. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mark. 
The glitz and the glamour of this year's Academy Awards show will cast at least one high-tech company in the limelight. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will commemorate the Eastman Kodak Company with an Oscar statuette for scientific and engineering achievement. Kodak executive Henri Petit says that the Oscar means a lot to the company, especially since the award was recommended by the industry, industry's top scientists and engineers. Kodak will receive the award for developing what it calls Eastman Color Intermediate Film. The company says this film enables cinematographers to create more subtle imagery by ensuring their work will be faithfully reproduced on the theatrical screen. And New Media News will be right back after these messages. JCN, Jones Computer Network, is now a 24-hour cable television network, and it's your connection to anything and everything to do with computers and new technologies. To get JCN on your cable system, call your local cable operator. JCN, it all computes. Do you want to be more efficient and persuasive at work, more creative at home? Well, you can be. Learning Microsoft Word can turn your computer into a powerhouse. It can unlock your imagination. The Video Software School can show you how to use Word quickly, easily, and at your own pace. This is a comprehensive three-volume course. It starts with the very first step for creating a document. By the end of the course, you'll be creating beautiful documents like these. You'll love the clear, concise demonstration by a professional software trainer. To order the Video Software School course on Microsoft Word, call 1-800-777-MIND. You'll get these three lessons, more than an hour and a half of demonstrations for a special package price of just $79.95, plus shipping and handling. Call today, 1-800-777-MIND. Put the power of Word to work for you. When it comes to buying the newest in computer products, you want the facts, fast. So JCN is giving you the facts, 24 hours a day. Just call 1-800-FAX-JCN for the latest, most up-to-date hardware and software information. A simple phone call will deliver computer product information right to your fax in just seconds. It's all free, it's all fast, and it's all yours when you call 1-800-FAX-JCN. So hurry. If you're new to computers and you're having a hard time finding the information superhighway, watch PCTV's Computers 101. Weeknights on JCN, the Jones Computer Network. Welcome back. Solve the mysteries of the Amazon, or die trying. Well, actually, death will be simulated only if you can't avoid the deadly stinging catfish or the hungry piranha. They are creatures you'll meet by playing the Amazon Trail educational game by Mac on your Mac.
There are hundreds of computer games now on the market. New Media News regularly spotlights the newest games. And here's an example called Demolition Man. It's from Virgin Interactive Entertainment. This next new media news report concerns a new online bulletin board called The Black Experience. Spokeswoman Patricia Enright says members of the Prodigy Commercial Online Service can access The Black Experience. Enright says that once online, the bulletin board invites discussions on such social issues as race relations and minority interest. She says The Black Experience is also a good place for networking and business advice about everything from securing a loan to starting a business. It sounds like a good way for those budding entrepreneurs to have resources. Yeah, that's true. And interesting to talk about race relations online where you can't tell the race or gender of the person you're talking to unless they offer it to you. Some uh, hot discussions will be there, I think. I'm sure. And that's New Media News for now. Join us next time as we explore the dynamic world of New Media. how Infinity D brought it all together. Hello, I'm Debbie Lewis Johnson. On this program, we review a lot of the most useful and popular design software. Today, we're going to explore a real application for a lot of the software we've seen on earlier shows. We're going to learn how designers can pool the programs to build an entire planetarium presentation. 
please stay with us for the Talking to Dan Nathus, Program Director at the Planetarium. Dan, tell us something about the program shows you do at the Planetarium. Oh, I'd love to. Magic here. The programs themselves cater to a very mixed audience. Here at the Planetarium, we're part of the Denver Museum of Natural History. It's actually one of the highest visited tourist attractions in the state of Colorado, next to Rocky Mountain National Park. We have hundreds of thousands of visitors through the facility and through our planetarium each year. And because of that, we have to cater to a very diverse audience, a lot of interest, a lot of different types of shows. Could you tell us something about the shows you put together here? I'm biased since I am heavily involved in putting those together, but we try to maintain an element of magic, a certain amount of entertainment, and an educational level to show them and share some things they may have not seen before. Tell me how you use technology. The technology is my love in this business and really the root of how we accomplish what we do. Everything from the star machine itself, which is controlled, a lot of electronics, a lot of technology there, over 50 slide projectors around in the space all the way around you see in the gallery and the rest there's hardware and electronics even right here in front of us there are many dozens of machines each of them individually controlled by an automation system do you integrate computer graphics into your presentations you bet and it's not just computer graphics in the show we use the computers for everything from scripting the shows themselves doing storyboarding um, even the computer system design of the electronics and the hardware but the fun part that you're alluding to is the way we create the images up on the dome itself in the computer we use computer graphics both as still slides and also as moving video and integrating is the key word we don't just do shows that are computer graphics we use the star machine the slides the special effects but the computer animation allows a layer of detail and demonstration of physics and phenomenon we can't do any other way do you use computer animation in your presentations more and more the computer animation we're laying to videotape we actually use video projection in the presentations and the computer animation is a great way to model the physics and the science planetary motion i'm using it a lot for we used to do that using still slides and now i can add motion to those slides to get concepts across better uh, it would be impossible to do that without computer animation i'd like to see how you do this let's go Here's where it all used to happen, Pat. We relied on mechanical machines to get images up on the dome, but now thanks to computer graphics and video projection, we don't have to rely on this kind of hardware anymore. After a break, we'll be back to see the people and the machines behind the programs at Gates Planetarium. Where are your software dollars going? A floppy disk or a CD-ROM only costs about a dollar or two dollars to make. And you're paying about $60 for your software products. Marketing is king on 10 nanoseconds of fame, Saturday at 8.30 and 10.30 p.m. Eastern. This is Barry Farber for IDT, the folks who give you unlimited, uncensored internet for just $15 a month. Thousands of you have been signing up for IDT's unbeatable internet service. IDT puts the whole entire world in your hands. News, entertainment, science, sex, art, libraries, games, people for one low, flat monthly fee of just $15. And that includes complete technical help. You heard right. IDT gives you all the internet all the time, including technical support for only $15 a month. No hourly charges, no censorship, no limits, and it's always, I repeat, always a local call. Now, isn't that a welcome change from all those big, bland online companies who censor what you can see and do and have the nerve to charge by the minute? So grab your pencil and get ready to take down IDT's toll-free number. Let IDT put the whole unlimited world in your hands for just $15 a month. Read, write, research, correspond, download just about everything imaginable 24 hours a day. Call IDT now at 1-800-245-8000. I repeat, that's 1-800-245-8000. When it comes to buying the newest in computer products, you want the facts. Fast. So JCN is giving you the facts 24 hours a day. Just call 1-800-FACTS-JCN for the latest, most up-to-date hardware and software information. A simple phone call will deliver computer product information right to your facts in just seconds. It's all free, it's all fast, and it's all yours when you call 1-800-FACTS-JCN. So hurry.
what I need you to do is come up with the opening for the Star Talk. So we have the title of Star Talk, but it needs to look well in the dome. So I want you to be really aware of the edges where things come in and out and keep it black in the background. And then if you're bringing the stars into the letters, have it make sense.
your connection to computers and related technologies. MEU, your education connection. The air dances with the waters, brings the rain that feeds the land. The land gives the water boundaries, the animals a home. The animals, they keep the land from being lonely, fill the air with song. All life dances together. In a world so connected, choosing one environmental cause can be hard. All life sings together. Now there's Earthshare, 40 of the world's most respected environmental charities working under one name. To find out how you and your company can help, call 1-800-MY-SHARE. All life lives, or doesn't, together. This is Mind Extension University, a Jones Education Network. Marta, it looks like you've spent a lot of time in this room getting images ready for the dome. How do you do that? Yes, I have spent a lot of time in here. Uh, the first thing we would do is take slides of the picture that we wanted to project in the dome. Uh, we would take two pictures exactly at light.
in the dome. Hi, Todd Feltz with Gates Planetarium. I'm a designer here and I found that when working with designer software, uh, you occasionally need to step back and get some perspective. For instance, I was given a design to create a loop that actually looked E, and to do that, you have to rely a certain amount on, on perspective. Uh, and today, I grab a mock uh, and just imagine what that's supposed to look like or I take a picture and actually tilt it so that I can see exactly how those lines go off into space. JCN, Jones Computer Network, is now a 24-hour cable television network and it's your connection to anything and everything to do with computers and new technologies. To get JCN on your cable system, call your local cable operator. JCN, it all computes. Coming up next, take a look at what's happening in the world of computers on Computer Chronicles, next on Mind Extension University. When it comes to buying the newest in computer products, you want the facts. Fast. So JCN is giving you the facts 24 hours a day. Just call 1-800-FAX-JCN for the latest, most up-to-date hardware and software information. A simple phone call will deliver computer product information right to your fax in just seconds. It's all free, it's all fast, and it's all yours when you call 1-800-FAX-JCN. So hurry. I was afraid of the computer, but with Quicken, the world's number one finance software, it's easy. And to find out just how easy, call this number to try Quicken for just $9.95. Stop worrying about money. Quicken shows exactly where your money goes and exactly how much you have. Get all your financial information accurately organized in one place. Let Quicken pay your bills, track bank accounts, investments, taxes, budgets, and more. And it's simple because Quicken looks and works just like your checkbook, only easier. Pay a bill once, then next time Quicken remembers and does it all. See how Quicken's graphs instantly show you what you spent in any given month or on any given item. Get reports like these at the touch of a key. And let Quicken reconcile your whole bank statement in less than two minutes. So, if you have a PC with Windows, DOS, or a Mac, call now to try Quicken for only $9.95. That's right, only $9.95 to try Quicken. Call 1-800-624-1652. Jeff, this one, a little tougher. For a little star, we need to create the face of the star, separate elements coming out of the face, against black, and remember it's floating up on the dome with no reference around it. So we need to create looking like it's bowing out of the dome and alive in separate pieces, and these are all going to slide. So what we see here may not be what we have in the dome. Compare those back and forth.
modify. And the way I modified that was to create basically the same character, but I would move other parts of the face. So in this case, I would say, well, here's the eyeball for the first character. This is going to be the second character. I would take and move this eyeball around, maybe just alter that a little bit. And now this whole eye is different just by moving that, that eyeball over. The other part of it I would do, though, is to uh, move where the lips are. And also, I changed the shape of the mustache. And I'll show you, that's, that's relatively simple. I take and just grab and highlight the mustache here. You can change these where you can grab just a single point. Any one of these little boxes that you see is just a point. You can take and move and alter that and change it around. It takes a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, um, that's really the, where you find the function in this program. So by changing this shape, say, so when a mustache, I can take either grab the whole thing as one unit and move it up and down, or in this case, I would take and just, just maybe curve up the end of the mustache just a little bit to give it a different look. I could do the same thing with the lips, um, but that gets a little more complicated in the fact that there, it's multiple layered in here in the lips. So I build it as a unit, one piece over another piece, but they're all in.